Steve Block. I'm the West Regional Vice President of our EV Charging Division within ABB. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with ABB, I'm going to take a little bit of time just then cover it for just about 30 seconds or a minute. But about me, I've been in the EV charging industry for about nine years. I'm an electrical engineer by trait. And we, ABB and OneSource, have had a long-standing partnership over the years. And Corbin and I have worked very closely together for, I think, about three years right now. Um, I've been with ABB now for three years, and I've watched the EV charging industry evolve tremendously over the last nine years. And uh, when you look at the number of EVs that were available nine years ago versus what's available now, it's crazy what's going on. The transformation now from not just electric cars, but electric transit buses, school buses, and trucks is really transforming the industry. This photo that I have here is to give you an idea of a DC fast charger and the size of them in relation to the size of a car. So right now you see in about the refrigerator size form factor, stations used to only be able to do 50 kilowatts and now we're able to do 180 kilowatts in the same form factor. So the industry is changing, so much is changing. Uh, when it comes to ABB, you know, we're a very large public company. We have over 100,000 employees. We do a lot of different things. We're, you know, we're, we offer switch gear. We do robotics. We do UPSs. We're in the data center space. Um, but I'm specifically talking today about our division that focuses on EV charging. Today, we're in the U.S. market, we're only offering DC fast chargers. But globally, we have started to introduce AC chargers as well. And today we are the number one market share position for DC fast with over 30,000 DC fast chargers installed in over 85 countries. So this is, you know, we have a small amount of time to talk uh, about EV charging. I could talk about EV charging for several hours and people have heard me do that. Um, so to condense it in a short amount of time, it's hard to cover all the different facets. So. There's a lot of different use cases for EV charging. We have residential charging for people who buy their own cars. We have public charging for people who want to charge their cars very quickly. We have all these OEMs, whether it's car dealerships, truck dealerships, they need infrastructure at their facility in order to support the charging of the vehicles that they're trying to sell. Many corporations have sustainability goals and they're putting charging stations at their workplace. And then we also have what's becoming more, uh, I don't want to say new, but it's evolving and growing so quickly, is really fleet charging. Historically, fleet charging was just a company that bought a fleet of electric cars, and they were using it to run their business. Now, fleet charging is transit buses, it's trucks, it's school buses. The kind of charging station that you purchase will vary based on the dwell time. So. An AC charger is perfect for residential. With an AC charger, it may take somewhere between four hours and eight hours to charge your vehicle. Maybe that's a great use case for workplace as well, because you're at work for about eight hours when people used to go into an office. Um, and then we have, of course, public charging and fleet charging, where the, if the batteries are very large in a specific vehicle, you need a fast charger in order to charge those batteries. Or if you're in a public environment, you want the same experience that you get when, you, or at least similar when you go to a gas station where you want to be able to charge the vehicle super quick. So in order to talk a little bit about charging, we have to kind of make sure, I have to assume that not all of you know the differences between AC and DC fast charging. So this slide here looks at a car. When you look at how much energy and how, much, how far a vehicle can go, it's all about the battery. You know, there's a lithium ion battery pack in your vehicle. The size of it is always in kWh, kilowatt hours. And there's a BMS or battery management system that controls the charging rate. Most vehicles, especially cars, have what's called an onboard charger. That onboard charger converts AC to DC to charge the battery. Once again, the BMS is charging, is um, controlling those charge rates. So when the vehicle has a low state of charge, it'll charge very quickly. As the battery becomes full, the battery doesn't want to be damaged. It'll slow the charge rate. So the lowest cost option to charge a vehicle is to buy an AC charger. 
and an AC charger can be plugged into a wall outlet. It can be plugged into 120 volts or a little higher voltage like a dryer outlet at 208 or 240 volts. But at those input voltage and power level, the charge rates anywhere from seven kilowatts to about 15 kilowatts, which may or may not be fast enough for your application. Hence, we go to the picture on the right, which is a DC fast charger. Typically, DC fast chargers are plugged into higher voltage, 40 volt three phase systems. They can generate a lot more power. And the actual charging station has a lot of electronics that convert AC to DC and provide it directly to your battery. And that's how you're able to charge the vehicle much more quickly. Let's also define a couple other terms, such as power and energy. So power is in kilowatts, and it's defined as the rate of electricity usage. So simply, the higher the kW, the faster your charge rate will be. Now, if you take that power level and you keep a vehicle connected for a certain amount of time, that's how much energy you get, and that's kWh. So with kWh, that's the amount of electricity that is used. The more energy that you have in a battery, the farther a vehicle will go before it has to be recharged. So the number one question I get all the time is which power level for a charging station do I need? And the answer is it depends. How far do you drive every day? How much time do you have? What's your use case? Is it for your home? Is it for workplace? Is it for supporting an electric truck? Is it supporting an electric transit bus? So let's say we had a 50 kilowatt charger. Historically, that was a very popular size, although now higher power chargers are even more popular. And you plug in a vehicle for one hour. Now, it, this will vary depending on the BMS, but in theory, the vehicle would get 50 kilowatt hours of energy. So what does that mean? How does that translate to range? If you have a truck, you might only get 25 miles of range from a truck or even a little less from a transit bus because they're very heavy and big. With certain cars, you may get as much as four miles per kilowatt hour, so up to 200 miles of range. And obviously at higher power levels, like 150 kilowatts, you can get 150 kilowatt hours of energy or anywhere from 75 to say 450 miles of range. Now this busy slide is just to show in context all the different products that ABB offers. So AC chargers, as I mentioned, we haven't launched those in the US market yet, but we are planning to. Um, they are offered in other countries. We have a lower powered, what we call DC wall box, which means it's a wall mount option that's at about 24 kilowatts. We have our 50 kilowatt, and we also have our 90, 124, 184, which is a 90 kilowatt, 120 kilowatt, and 180 kilowatt charging station, all in one enclosure. So you simply bring three phase power to this box, you install it, you get an electrical contractor and a general contractor to do that work, um, and you're able to charge a vehicle at very high power levels. There are a couple different standards for cables and connectors, but in general, in the US market, the CCS connector is the standard. Tesla is using a different standard. Uh, the Japanese manufacturers were using Chatamo for a while, uh, but they've stopped uh, offering those for newer vehicles in the US market. So in general, you have existing vehicles that may need Chatamo, but the rest are using CCS. The Terra 124 and 184 are somewhat unique in that they can charge two vehicles simultaneously by splitting the power, or one vehicle super fast if the other connector is not being used. The station on the far right can charge a vehicle up to 350 kilowatts. Now the vehicle would have to support that charge rate. And in order to do that, we've separated the power electronics into a power cabinet, which is separate from a dispenser. So we call that a two-part system. It's a little bit more expensive to install a two-part system, but what's pretty neat about that system itself is the cable actually has liquid cooling. So it's a liquid cool cable to ensure that you are able to deliver a high amount of current 
to the vehicle. Now, one would think that the charging stations are you know, pretty simple and not so complex, but that's not the case. So there's a lot that goes on with the DC fast charger. Every DC fast charger we offer comes with a cellular modem included. That allows our cloud to be able to talk to the station. We use that to configure the station. We use it to troubleshoot a station. We use it to update firmware, remotely resolve problems. But at the same time, there are partners of ours that offer what we call an OCPP cloud platform. OCPP, by the way, is the standard for communicating in the EV charging industry. It stands for Open Charge Point Protocol. So we're able to program the station to point to different partners, depending upon what software you're looking to optimize the charging experience. Some of these software partners of ours are optimized around public charging. Others are optimized around fleet charging, and they offer some really cool ways to reduce your energy costs. Um, some of them have integrated with utilities through something called Open ADR that gives you demand response capability. So depending on what your needs are, you'll partner with one of these software providers. They offer ways for you to monetize the station, so collect money from the various drivers. And others may be more about fleet charging and helping you optimize and minimize your electricity costs. So this picture here, it just gives you some examples of some various customers that we've deployed. And I try to pick a couple that show different use cases. So in the upper left, you see an overhead charging system that can deliver up to 450 kilowatts to a transit bus. And then in the bottom left, you see our DC wall box in use with a, another transit bus, but this, you know, they have longer dwell time. So at, at night, and they don't necessarily need really super fast charging throughout their day. So at night, they would plug into something a little bit uh, slower. And then towards the middle, you see more public charging pictures and you see how some of our customers like to brand or wrap the station to meet their use cases. I love this picture that says Ivy on it. That's up in Canada. You can see these chargers are designed to work in cold as well as hot temperatures. Um, one of our great partners, EVGO on the upper right, you can see some beautiful pictures of their stations charging some vehicles. And then the bottom right, we have applications, which is ch the charging of trucks. And uh, there are various OEMs now that have just started to go into full production now for the electrification of their trucks. And you know, in general, the DC fast charger is required because the battery packs can be as big as 400 kilowatt hours. So that's a lot of energy. And it, in order to charge it in a relatively fast amount of time, you would need a DC fast charger. And that was all I had. So I want to thank Angel Bead. I want to thank OneSource. And I want to thank all of you for hanging in there. I think I'm your next to last speaker. But thank that, you very much. That